Any physician that espouses the use of this should be reported to their state medical association. Now that is a direct quote from um, the chairman of internal medicine from the University of South Florida. His name is John Sinat, Dr. John Sinat. And it's alarming because um, it was in an article by the Tampa Bay Times uh, just last week, um, talking about ivermectin and off-label use. In the article, both Merck and the CDC recommended against using ivermectin for COVID-19 treatment. I know there is some disagreement in the medical community, and I'm not here to take sides or tell you to stop doing it or to start doing it. I know some of the doctors in my community that follow me believe very strongly in ivermectin's use, and some, like Dr. Sinat, very much don't believe in its use for um, for COVID-19. So what are we to do about it and how can you protect yourself so that you're not um, reported to the medical association in your state? Or better yet, if you are, how you can protect yourself from any inquiries or phone calls you get from them. Just as a reminder, I'm Scott Radigan. I'm an attorney, founder of Functional Lawyer. My wife is a doctor, a functional medicine doctor. And so I am heavily invested in all of the scuttlebutt that we see in Facebook and social media. Um, and I know that there is a lot of disagreement about this. So I'm not here to pick sides I'm politically, scientifically. I don't know what ivermectin does or does not do. But when you see an article like that in, what, in my line of work, uh, it's my job to tell you um, what to do oh, or how you can prevent your risk. Now, that's a, that's a really scary quote. That was actually the subtitle of the article. And so I have had a couple of conversations this week with doctors that are prescribing ivermectin and, and wanting to know how to do it safely and make sure that they are, no one can eliminate risk, but how they can reduce their risk as much as possible. So the number one way to do that is to talk to the patient, right? Um, I'm, you've been following me for any length of time. It's all about informed consent. And if you do in a proper informed consent and you use a written memorialization, so a document that confirms the conversation that you have with the patient about all the risks, benefits, and alternatives to ivermectin, and you still believe in its efficacy, uh, with its off-label use, then, then that is probably the best path you can take um, for this situation. Now, I know everybody in the functional medicine world comes from different political ends of the spectrum, comes from different backgrounds of all different types. And so, again, I'm not here to tell you what to believe or, or what to say or think. Uh, but if you want to engage in prescribing or recommending ivermectin to patients, here is what I would recommend for you. Get a solid informed consent, not one that you found on the internet, not one that you found 10 years ago when you first got into alternative medicine. Get a solid one. If you don't have it, we have it at Functional Lawyer. Then go through and edit and make sure that the, that the informed consent talks about the risks of using this drug, the risks of using it for not its intended purpose, and the alternatives to it. Um, what are the benefits? The CDC and Merck itself says there are no benefits to COVID-19. You should tell the patients that. Um, then, then there's no coercion or anything like that. You should tell them that. You should tell them that's not intended for COVID-19. In fact, CDC and Merck have said it's not supposed to be used for COVID-19. If you can point to studies that you know of um, or any kind of evidence that is backing up your decision, do that and say, here are some of the benefits to ivermectin. And then point to the study. Hopefully it's a good peer reviewed study. And, and you guys know this, you're scientists, you know academic papers, get your sources from good sources, right? But if you can point to those and say that to the patient, and we've got these sources over here that are saying it's fine to use or it has been shown to work or however you want to say that the that source is leading to good results, um, but you better, you better tell them that CDC says no, that Merck says no, that the chairman of internal medicine at the University of South Florida's uh, medical school says no, 
Um, he's an epidemiologist as well. And again, I'm not here to slant anything either way. Um, but if you're going to do this, you need to let your patients know all of this information. So talk about the risks, talk about the benefits, and then talk about the alternatives. Get a vaccine, um, get the Regeneron, which is also a lightning rod issue. Um, but talk about alternatives to doing it. Don't get the vaccine, but continue to wear a mask while we still rage in this pandemic. That's another alternative to using this drug um, off-label. So um, that quote, once again, any physician who espouses this should be reported to their state medical association. It's pretty alarming. It's a good reminder that functional medicine, although growing and becoming more popular by the day, is still very much not the mainstream and is still very much a minority, especially for conventional doctors, conventional doctors in academia as well. And just a reminder that you ought to be taking steps to reduce any kind of risk that you have. Um, but why you should get the informed consent is that one, the patient is aware that Merck, the CDC don't approve of it, um, that there are still critics. They are aware of what you've pointed to, to um, point to its benefits. And they're aware of any alternatives. Now, if you can point to all three of those things and say, yes, we had a conversation about this, they're very much aware of it. I believe in its efficacy as the doctor. Um, and so I'm gonna, going to go ahead and recommend this treatment. You should eliminate most of the risk that you are incurring with that. Now, there's no guarantees in life, but you'll at least be able to go to bed more secure in the fact that you're, you're having people come into this with their eyes wide open particularly in today's age where, where people get their information may not be a peer-reviewed study. It may not be a mainstream news site. And it may be some corner of the internet, both on the right and the left, where the misinformation runs rampant. So you need to do a duty as a, a person of medical licensure that you're giving people accurate information um, when you do your job. So that is the number one thing. Give people the accurate information. If they get mad at you, if you don't like ivermectin, don't prescribe it and tell them why. If you do like it, cover your buns with um, a proper informed consent. Again, you can get it here at Functional Lawyer. And there's a video that teaches you how to edit for your situation as well. So if you have any questions about this, don't ask me. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, be careful out there. It is a lightning rod. It is a contentious and polarizing issue. Um, and so you want to make sure you're covering uh, yourself, covering your risks and um, protecting your assets. So nobody wants a medical board review. It is scary, number one. Um, and it can take the emotional toll and sometimes a time toll and, and a financial toll. Um, if it gets serious, then nobody wants it. So the best way to prevent that or make that go smoother is to use a, a, a proper informed consent process. If you have any questions about that process, let me know. Uh, you can always reach out to us at Functional Lawyer. If you liked this video, please subscribe and um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.